although you won't find any of these names on the billboards in our culture, they, they are floating out around out there and some of them are Christian and some of them aren't. Some of them are Urantia book related, like, um, you know, uh, the inner voice is number one. It's probably the most commonly understood one. Uh, gut intuition, female gut intuition. Uh, executive ESP, those are common terminologies that we use to kind of describe intuition, but we really don't refer to it as God per se, empath, usually. Empath. Being an empath, so you're feeling people's emotional... Yeah, that's a different thing, emotions, totally different. So some of the other names, for instance, are your inner doctor. You know, in the COVID context, probably the most relevant thing. It's uh, commonly referred to as a thought adjuster in the Arantia book, because what does it do? It adjusts your thoughts. It's like you want to go right at the light, at the red light, and the thought adjuster wants you to turn left, but to go to right is where work is that you have to be at nine o'clock in the morning sharp or you're going to get fired. Are you going to follow your logic and go to work at 9 a.m. and not get fired? Or are you going to turn left and follow your thought adjuster? Well, it turns out when you follow your thought adjuster, you go down this block, to use the analogy, about three blocks, and there on the sidewalk is a suitcase. You jump out of the car, you open the suitcase, and it's full of $100 bills, metaphorically. Okay? It's always the right answer. You're always going to get more than going to work. You're always, it always turns out that way. No, more, no matter how irrational it is, in fact, the more irrational it is, the more likely it is to be a profound truth. Right. So that you learn by trial and error, because we all have fear, we all have caution about that. And it's not common sense, and what am I doing? And there's all these things that we go through as we refine this connection to our inner spirit. So it adjusts your thoughts very powerful concept. And eventually, the Arantia book says, when you get to be about 42 years old, if you followed a serious spiritual development path, which most of us haven't, your thought adjuster becomes your thought controller. Not in the disciplinarian authoritarian sense, but in the sense that it's dominantly guiding you all the time, and you like it. You like this guidance, because it's always giving you good good results. So it becomes your thought controller at around the mature age of 42. Coincidentally, Jungian psychology says the same thing in different words. Is it possible for someone younger to achieve this? Ah, uh, there's always exceptions. There's always exceptions to the normal rule. I just turned 40 last, last December, oh, and cool. I felt like I was walking around in a desert for the last 40 years. Compared, have like a revelation of, right and i've been a christian for 15 years but i was missing so much you know i received a lot more revelation um, right because you're maturing you're maturing and, and as a wisdom, person uh, in a lot of areas yeah. and now i don't I, i'm not sidetracked so easily right you know well, like in the, in the kabbalah it's also like late 40s yeah yeah, yeah. same difference so there's that. I and think men take a little longer. <laughs> some a little longer, some a little shorter. Depends where you start, you know? So right. there's the spirit self, your inner self, the self, the big self, the higher self, the self with a capital S, the indwelling spirit, the father fragment, the father fractal, the ka of the ka and the ba is actually that inner voice. Interesting, we had that discussion before you guys came. Um, the spirit spark of God, the spirit within, the spirit self, the spirit, the source within, the first source and center, the God inward, the whisperer, the God whisperer, the inner being, the inner guide, consult with your inner guide, the still small voice within, that's a common one, the God mind, the big mind, the inner guidance, and it goes on and on. I sometimes refer to it as the GPS system. The God Positioning System. Ooh, I made that one up. I like that. <laughs> so, but that's what it's basically doing. It's putting you in the position of knowing what God's will is. But 
which is a very cool, powerful place to be in. So that's just a, some of the names. None of those, as I said earlier, will you ever find on a billboard anywhere. <laughs> so it's just not part of our common culture. The Matrix is our common culture. So this is the antidote to the Matrix, is this connection to cosmic reality. And the big problem, if, as we've discussed here tangentially, is languaging, is cultural referencing. Are we comfortable with the words we're using to describe the same experiences? Or are we a little offended or a little put off by it? Is it not Jewish enough? Is it not Christian enough? Is it not Urantia enough? You know, those are limitations that experience always transcends and includes once you have the experience. But before that, it's just an intellectual concept. It's just a nice idea, which doesn't go very far because wars, wars are fought over nice ideas and we disagree on the ideas. But once we have that essential experience, that's the key. And my experience is that people don't volunteer for this kind of training readily they have to be kicked into it by suffering suffering is the great teacher for humanity unfortunately there's the path of knowledge and there's the path of suffering needless to say with my medical background i defaulted into the path of suffering and graduated myself gradually out of that so now it's about knowledge and, and learning and awareness and that's a much more fun path uh, but the path of suffering is easier, you know, you, you, you don't have a choice. It's really easy to make the right decision. Okay, so that's a little bit about the indwelling spirit. Any questions about so far about that? Um, so how to get more awareness of this is very important. It's the most important, I think, arguably, it's the most important practical endeavor that you can have because it's the beginning of your really mature spiritual path you know up until that point it's the knowledge and the information and the do's and the don'ts and the rights and the wrongs which is a stage but after that it becomes am i really listening to this inner voice am i really following it does it really want me to turn right or left at the, at the red light. Am I gonna pick up the bag of money or am I gonna to go to work on time? And get, well, it turns out, by the way, when you come back from picking up your bag of metaphorical money on the corner, when you go back to work, it turns out your boss was late for work and he doesn't even know that you were late for work. And that doesn't matter either because you're gonna quit because now you have a big bo box of money and you don't need to do that job anymore, metaphorically. That's what happens every single time I've ever followed the inner voice. Every single time without fail. It's like foolproof right answers. Who has a problem with that? <laughs> it's very exciting to be at that level where you are, you know, really consistently getting those answers. You know, and there's nuances to it. It's not all black and white. It's not a computer in the sky that spits out an answer when you type in the question, necessarily. It's always, the answer is always designed to make you learn more or maybe give you a, a quick answer that will take you out of the dilemma. Is that why they it's call it the designed, internet? They call it the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's always designed to make you learn more. And it can be very clever once you get more mature and more confident and comfortable with the answers. They become more sophisticated as you become more confident about following them. It's not going to be black and white necessarily every time. So those are the few things that I've learned about the inner spirit, the inner indwelling spirit. That's what, in the context of what I do, I call it the way of spiritual nutrition. You're nurturing yourself spiritually, nutritionally, psychologically, soul level. It's all of that. It's not separate realities. When I do my practice, I think of myself as a tree. Yeah. With the roots going deep down into the earth. 
breathing with my meditation. And when you say you think of yourself that way, do you really mean you experience yourself as if you are that? Yes. Which is very different than thinking yes. about it. This is language, it's very important. Like I said, wars are fought over stupid language. I become <laughs> the essence of, of the truth. Yeah, the you become that, right. That's a unity consciousness experience, which is another level. <laughs> I, I had the privilege of having that experience for six weeks straight in India, where everything was me and I was everything, and there was no separation at all whatsoever. It was a completely different paradynamic reference point. Nothing made any sense with my old mind at all. And so that is one of the stages that you grow into unity consciousness on the way to what Byron referred to as as what's the word that starts with an A? Fusion. Fusion. Yeah, you fuse eventually with that God fragment. Your personality fuses with it. You don't lose your personality but they are fused. That's an interesting word, fused. Look it up in the dictionary. It's probably the only English word that really describes this incredible state of unity consciousness. It's a fusion. So biblical characters have been alluded to. There's two or three of them, I think, in the Bible, uh, going up in the chariots of fire. Because what happens if you do that in your physical body, or you still have a physical body, it disappears because you don't need it anymore. It's gone. It just burns up. It's, it's chariots of fire. It's Elijah, I think it is. Elijah. Right. So that's what that really means esoterically. And uh, there are people, modern people, who have done this. They have, quote unquote, disappeared. There's a little burn mark in the, in the living room chair. And that's it. Spontaneous combustion. Yeah, that's what they call it scientifically. But a lot of times it's really fusion, you know. And the old, the old thing that we learned in the '60s and '70s, you really can't judge a person's level of consciousness by their actions. <laughs> it doesn't correlate because it's it's beyond behind the scenes. It's not what you're seeing on the surface value. You can't really judge it as a normal human. That's why it's not good to judge things because we can't see the whole spectrum what all this means. I had an experience once, briefly enough, and it was so profound it changed my whole contention about worrying about anything because I saw that everything was orchestrated underneath perfectly and all you have to do is plug into that orchestration. It's un an unmistakably profound God consciousness experience. And I, I, the analogy is the best one I can think of is we commonly tell time by looking at those three things on the front of the watch that move very strategically and we know exactly what time it is. But if you really want to know how time works, you look underneath the face of the watch. And there's all these gears and pistons and things going all over <laughs> the place. And they look like crazy, but they're all perfectly orchestrated. And that's when I got to see got to see that everything is totally, completely orchestrated, and all you have to do is shut up, keep up, and stay out of the way, to put it in crass, blue-collar language. That's what you have to do. On so that note, <laughs> <laughs> we have concluded today's so, incredible session. Are there any other comments or questions? Please. I was just going to say that also, Fleeting things like, you know, food and experiencing sex or whatever, those are very short processes. And I want processes that last a longer time. That, you know, to do meditation. Yeah, that's a system, systems, organ, systems organization. Because gratification is yeah. it's fleeting. It's like, right. So you do apprehend, 
at, at a time of your match, match rate. I mean, I did the binary thing for 15 years, yes and no answers. Right. I was happy right. with that because you know, I didn't die. But then after that, it's like, what is the process? What is the system? Right. A, bigger, a bigger process. Can we get a big picture here? Where are we going with this? And that is also answerable through the indwelling spirit. That's a great question. No one's ever asked me that question. Yeah, it's a big, the big picture question. That's a computer guy would think like that. <laughs> or a musician would think like that. Pick one, anyone. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that when you said orchestrated. <laughs> we work, we play in orchestras, right? Right. Yes. We're, we're part of the, yes. the playfulness of the orchestration. It makes the music, it makes us feel better, and opens up people's hearts. And, Right, yeah. it's a system. It's a system. Yeah, it's a it's a functional we love it so it's a heart system. Right, and we're just part of that flow. We're so about to launch into to the tones. Yeah. <laughs> right now.